The longest, shortest season continues, as our next guest likes to call it, Anthony Bellino from the X's and Bros on Morning Blitz Fox Sports Radio here in Toledo. And Anthony, let's let's first talk about what we don't know, which is whether or not Michigan's going to be able to play on a Saturday against Maryland. And we know that the conspiracy theorists are out there, and this isn't a conspiracy. First off, COVID-19, we're not going to talk about that's a conspiracy. Michigan wants to play the next couple of weeks. It's a matter of whether or not the science, the medical staff, the protocols will allow them to play. There, there is no grand conspiracy about Michigan trying to shut down the season to hurt any of their future opponents. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't buy into that. You know, if they if they have positive tests, they have positive tests. I mean, look at Ohio State. Do you, do you think that they want to miss out on any games? I mean, I think that right now everybody wants to be out on the field. Everybody wants to play, uh, despite even a two and four record after. Uh, this past Saturday's debacle. I think that we look forward to, you know, Maryland, it's being at home. Uh, what is the, you know, what's the the state of Michigan's population? What color code are we in for the Big Ten? Um, you know, it's a 3.30 kickoff on BTN. So you have Saturday, you know, you'll figure this out by Friday. But I guess it's good to know that if you do have some positive uh, cases, you, you know, early in the week, it's Monday. So you have time to prepare if missing player X, Y, and Z. I think that gives you a leg up versus finding out maybe on a Wednesday or a Thursday. I think any day that you know in advance uh, will definitely help the preparation. You would think, I mean, based on last Saturday, who knows who's preparing what right now? I mean, I, hell, after watching that, Mark, I can barely prepare dinner. I can tell you that much. But uh, you would think that the extra four days, knowing exactly who's going to be available and who's not, that's important. Whether or not this game gets played, however, that's uh, I mean, that's that's a that's a coin toss right now. After the news came out, and that's the first thing I thought was like, okay, so if they don't play this week, you have an extra week to prepare for Ohio State. That's if Ohio State can get their act together and get some uh, get some negative tests, and then and, and who even knows with the Big Ten, the way that they have implemented the the three canceled games rule that you are no longer eligible for the Big Ten championship game. I think from an Ohio State perspective and from the conference perspective, they need to take a, you know, relook at this and take another gander. And maybe I don't want to say move the goalposts, but definitely need to reevaluate where we're at right now with the spike in cases that we're seeing across the country. It's flu season. So everybody's on high alert to begin with. Everybody's panicking, you know, one cough, one sneeze, one sniffle, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, what do you have? So I think that there's a lot to, to play in here, a lot for the Big Ten to look at, and a lot for the, the conferences to look at. For Michigan to make it through, you know, the first, you know, six weeks of this thing basically unscathed is, is pretty good. If the, you know, the wheels are already off the bus from the football standpoint, they come off on the medical standpoint now, two weeks left. I mean, you know, what's to be expected, right? Well, and Jim Harbaugh, one of the things he kept on going back to on Monday was this being proactive. The medical staff's being proactive. The football firm is being proactive. They are trying to get ahead of this. I, I think they do want to play on Saturday. They do want to have that home finale. They, they certainly don't want to go down as 2020 being the only year Michigan does not win a home game because that's right now they haven't won a game at home, and Maryland will be their last chance if they can play that game Saturday. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, home or road this year, I, I think that, it, and I can tell you this much, Mark, from a basketball perspective here, there isn't a sport that needs fans in the stands more than hoops. I could, especially college basketball. They, I mean, it's a completely different game. But from the football side of things, when you look at having to travel uh, where Michigan's two wins have come on the road, where have they been bad at? At home, where you'd think that most definitely 110,000 plus would make a little bit of a difference. That crowd uh, definitely makes a difference. It makes a difference uh, in the in the passion, the emotion of the young men out there running around on the football field. And you you threw out a very interesting stat there that I was actually not aware of was the fact that if they do not win this game on Saturday, if they can't play this game on Saturday, they would go winless at home for the first time in program history. Oh, Mark, that's a blemish, my friend. That is a big blemish. And with Maryland coming to town, we still have a somewhat open question about quarterback. Cade McNamara had to miss a couple of series during the Penn State game with a shoulder injury. We also found out that Joe Milton has been nursing an injury as well. So we don't have a healthy quarterback, maybe explaining a little bit of an inconsistent play at quarterback. But again, this is a, a team that has been floundering. This is a team that perhaps needs something dramatic in the last couple of weeks to, to salvage what has been a lost season. Yeah, I, I, and to be honest with you, I don't know if you can salvage it. I mean, obviously, the, if they were to get that game against Ohio State and win that, that would definitely 
uh, change some things. But I think at the end of the day, that really it, you, people talk about it all the time from the Ohio State and Michigan perspective. Like it wouldn't matter if we won a game all year, as long as we beat Michigan or as long as we beat Ohio State. Well, here's your test. Like, what are you really satisfied with? Um, you know, Michigan State, they were kind of trending that direction too until they upset uh, Northwestern this past weekend. So congratulations to Sparty and to Mel Tucker there. Uh, but for the Michigan Wolverines going into this game, let's say this game does get played. How is Kay McNamara's shoulder? What's going on with Joe Milton? Uh, and, and why and, and how did this offense, how did they choose Joe Milton going into the year over Cade McNamara? I think that's a legitimate question. I also think that we've overreacted to quarterbacks enough. I think that when you look at, you know, uh, it was John O'Corn. Oh, my goodness, we found our quarterback. Brandon Peters, uh, his first completed pass. We found our quarterback. Um, uh, Wilton Spate, we found our quarterback. Shea Patterson, like every time somebody completes their first pass, like, hey, we got a quarterback. And, you know, I felt susceptible to it uh, with Joe Milton as well. We, we found out very quickly that for whatever reason, whether it was the quarterback play or the scheme in hand, that something wasn't working and he was not really in a position to necessarily be successful, whether it was overthrowing wide open wide receivers or whatever the case may be. Then you look at Cade McNamara who comes in and looks pretty good uh, in his in his first uh, first bit of action this season. Then uh, last week goes, what, 12 of 25 for 91 yards? Like that's not going to cut it. But if it's on third down and four and you're running four wide receivers, into basically the same 20 yard area a 20 yard cube in the middle of the field what happened to speed and space that's not what we're looking for so now i i really i i just can't quite put my thumb on it you said lost season like mark my friend that's exactly what this is this is a lost year in michigan football as they look to take on maryland on a saturday what are what do you think the key to this game is going to be assuming we do get this game in is, is it finding an offensive identity is it maybe finding something defensively to, to slow down a Terrapin attack that at times has been able to put some points on the board? I think for, for Michigan, Maryland, this one for me, and I, I really like to see Hassan Haskins. I, I like the, uh, what he did a lot uh, this past week against Penn State. You know, he went over the 100-yard marker. They fed him the football consistently, which I think uh, was, was very important. And I think that you know, him getting the lead back, that's, uh, that's a definite positive uh, for this team. But I also think that, yeah, you got a little, uh, little tongue of Iloa there uh, in Maryland. And Maryland is a team that has, they've beaten Minnesota, a team that Michigan beat. They beat Penn State. Um, so a team that Michigan lost to. So, you know, no transit of property. Their two canceled games were Ohio State, Michigan State. They played Indiana last week and lost uh, 27 to 11. Um, but this is a team that I, I don't think that you can take lightly. I don't think Michigan is in the position to take anybody lightly. Um, but if Tunga Vailoa is going to throw three picks like he did uh, last week against Indiana, I like it uh, in favor of Michigan. But from an offensive standpoint, got to figure out a way to consistently run the football to for whoever is you know, playing quarterback, Joe Milton or Cade McNamara. Got to lighten the load on them a little bit. Uh, turn around, hand the ball off, and, and hopefully your, your five uh, road graders up front, that offensive line can get a little nasty and start putting some people in the ground. All right, Michigan, Maryland, late afternoon this coming Saturday if the game is played. Certainly want to thank our guest Anthony Bellino from the X's and Bros and Morning Blitz on Fox Sports Radio here in Toledo. Anthony, thank you again for your time. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you.